Good evening. Welcome to Chiller Night Theater. I am your host, Lord of the Dark, of ghosts and ghouls, of all things wicked, of poor lost souls. I am he known as Jack Shadow. Tonight, I am pleased to present the 1965 horror film, Terror Creatures from the Grave. Tonight's movie stars Barbara Steele and Walter Randy and was inspired by the writings of Edgar Allan Poe. Do you like tales of things that go bump in the night, and the things that crawl out of the grave seeking revenge? Then turn the lights down low. Pull that blanket up around you tight and settle in for terror creatures from the grave. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to help me out a little. I'm a stranger here. Could you tell me the direction to Dr. House Villa?
Excuse me. Is anyone here? I knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Good afternoon. This is Villa Hauf, isn't it? Would you please announce me? Am I disturbing? Who are you? My name is Albert Kovac. I just arrived here from Ratsani. I'm glad to meet you. Are you the daughter of Dr. Hauf? Yes, I'm Goring Hauf. You weren't expected. You must excuse the disorder here, but the villa has been closed for many months. We arrived only yesterday. Louise. Louise. Take the gentleman's coat. Did you have a pleasant trip? A little tiring, but I finally made it. And may I ask the nature of your business here? We received your father's communication in the evening mail, asking for a lawyer to check over his will. Wait a moment, please. Eccentric character this Dr. Hauf must be. He's obviously a scientist. It's pretty eerie having all these anatomical specimens around the house. Mr. Kovac, this way, please. Thank you. Well, it certainly wasn't easy finding this place. It's pretty isolated, and the roads are not very good. I know. Nobody ever comes here. Please follow me. In here. Corinne told me you're here to see my husband. That's right. He sent our firm a letter in reference to his will. A letter? May I see it? Certainly. I have it right here. Joseph Morgan. Are you Attorney Morgan? No, madam. I'm his partner. Mr. Morgan was out of town when the letter arrived. And since the matter seemed urgent, I came in his place. I will therefore expect you, not later than tomorrow, to assist me in drawing up my will. Faithfully, Geronimus Hauf. It looks like his writing. Even the seal seems authentic. And yet... It... I don't understand. Didn't your husband tell you? My husband... has been dead for a year. It 
doesn't make sense. Of course, Mr. Kovac, after your long journey, you'll be staying here tonight. It wouldn't be wise to venture forth on our bad roads in this weather. I'm honored. I'm sure it's only a joke in very poor taste. I can't help wondering why they chose to write to Mr. Morgan. Do you have any idea who might have done it? I can't imagine. Geronimus was the only doctor here. Everyone knew him. Admitting that this was a joke, I still wonder what they hoped to achieve. I find it very perplexing. I'm positive it's not a joke. The handwriting and the seal are my father's. How could he write a letter? He's been dead a year now. And you remember that the seal was put in his grave. There has to be a logical answer. Perhaps someone just duplicated the seal of Geronimus. It wouldn't be difficult. It could be anyone who had ever received a letter from my late husband. Do you mind if I smoke? Not at all. Thank you. I'm sure it's a warning for my father. Corrine, you are talking like a child. I think you should listen to your mother. Stepmother, Mr. Kovac. I was Dr. Hoff's second wife. Shall I serve the coffee? There may be more to this than we think. And as much as I dislike doing it, I'm afraid I'll have to advise Mr. Morgan and the public authorities. I'm sorry to ruin your vacation like this, but really I have no other choice. We didn't come for a holiday. We came to the villa to attend the transfer of Father's body to the family chapel. The anniversary of his death is two days from now. It had always been his wish to remain buried in the earth for a full year. He had strange notions, unusual for a man of science. It's very late. May I be allowed to leave now? Of course, Louise. I'll expect you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Not even a storm can keep her in the house. The villagers are afraid to spend the night here. And they spread all kinds of stories about it. They're a superstitious lot. Superstitious? Why don't you tell him the truth about my father? He was an accomplished spiritualist. Do you see this? Someone tried to disfigure. These marks weren't here before. These are real finger scratches. I know there are supernatural forces here. My father was trying to materialize them. That's enough, Corrine. Will you please stop this stupid chatter? It's not chatter. Oh, Mr. Kovac, you must be anxious to communicate with your office. The one modern convenience we have here is the telephone over there. Very kind of you. At this hour, Morgan is usually in his office. Excuse me. Hello, operator. Get me the office of Attorney Morgan in Ratsini. Merp is 2728. Hello, operator. What's wrong? Hello? 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 Hello, operator. What's going on? I heard strange noises on the phone. That's impossible, sir. The line to Ratsini is out of order. creature. He has such a faraway look. I wonder how much he knows about what's going on around here. <laughs> Somehow I sense he dislikes me. Did you speak to Mr. Morgan yet? No, the line to Ratsini is out of order. You can't expect too much from these modern inventions. But didn't all the servants leave? Oh, that's Kurt, our gardener. He's never stepped out of the villa since my father passed away. He enjoyed my father's trust. 
This old place doesn't frighten him at all. I can see it frightens you. It's certainly not a very cheerful place. This is a place of horror where thousands of men have died. The villa was erected on the ruins of a 15th century hospital. All the victims of the plague in this region were brought here. And not one of them left here alive. Now you might understand why everyone fears this morbid museum. Look, these are the mummified hands of men who were executed because it was believed they were spreading the Black Plague. Come, I'll show you to your room. Are you putting me in the torture room? I know it's very easy for you to joke about this subject, but this is what started my father's research into the history of the villa. And he uncovered many appalling secrets. Please. You can sleep there. It was my father's room. Good night. Good night, Corinne. What a strange situation I find myself in. Here I am, a guest in an old hospital for plague victims. Summoned by a dead man to draw up his will. And these two women, so different from each other. Those horribly severed hands. I remember reading about this ancient belief that some men spread the pestilence out of sheer malice. And when they were caught, their hands were severed. on the research of Geronimus Hoff, October 30th. Today I made contact with them again. I found out the plague killed them by the hundreds. The stench of the bodies poisoned the air. All day long, the tragic carts of the corpse collectors carried the dead to a common grave. A few survivors clung to life. They were obsessed with the sound of the creaking cartwheels. A sinister creaking, piercing. All hope was gone. The plague spreaders had polluted the water everywhere. When they were caught, the diabolical plague spreaders had their hands severed before they were hanged. Several of them were buried here in the garden. The water, the water. All the water was polluted, and water was desperately needed. Pure water. saying there's no one here stop it now i hope you will forgive us corinne is extremely tired i fear she imagines all sorts of things 
No, I tell you, he was here. I saw his face clearly. Now, now, Corrine. Come along with me. She'll be all right. I was standing there near the mirror. I saw him approaching me from the door. <coughs> Can't you see it's only a bronze head, Corrine? You see? Now, dear, come with me. You're very tired. You need some rest. She's like a child. Her head is full of fantasies. But of course, we all know the dead don't come back to life. She was attached to her father, wasn't she? It was he who filled her head with this nonsense. Ghosts, plague victims who returned to the villa. He believed he possessed occult powers. He imagined himself the master of them all. Poor Geronimus. He couldn't even foresee his own end. He was drinking one night with his friends. He was drunk and fell down the stairs. I'll show you. This is where he died. In two days, it will be exactly one year since his death. I've summoned them from their graves, and now I'm among them. I've summoned them from their graves, and now I'm among them. I've summoned them. Hot Tasty Pizza is just a phone call away at Pacelli Pizza. Select from our many choices of pizza toppings. And try our delicious subs, wings, salads, breadsticks, pasta meals, and even dessert. Pacelli Pizza offers quick, reliable, and friendly delivery. Or stop on in, say hello, and pick up your order at our Butler store located at 532 West Cunningham Street in Butler, PA. Check our website for complete menu, specials, store hours. The Chelly Pizza in Butler, PA, delivering classic Italian quality with every order. Gross Fest, the Pittsburgh area's hottest independent horror convention. Come to Gross Fest 3, July 25th and 26th at the George Washington Hotel at 60 South Main Street in Washington, PA. Guests include Drew Marvick, Billy Pond, Bill Oberus Jr., Aaron R. Ryan, Brooklyn Ewing, Jerry LaRue, Jack Shadow, Aura the Witch, and L. Von Nock from Chiller Night Theater. Check out GrossFest.com for our full list of guests, dates, location, and more. Don't miss GrossFest 3! The day of revenge is coming soon. Be mindful of how you treat people. You never know how acts of malice and cruelty will come back to haunt you later. <laughs> the village is a place of horror. Where many people have died, a castle was erected on the ruins of a 15th century hospital. All the victims of the plague were taken there and not one was left alive. Though it's said that they, they did contaminate the area's water supply. And we see in the display the mummified hands of those who were executed because it was believed that they were spreading the Black Plague. This rough crowd, good thing they weren't spreading STDs. Plagues, viruses. There is something ominous about an unseen monster out there. In one's mind, it's a thing that lays waiting, ready to infect its victim. It's a relatable topic right now, isn't it? I think most people would rather prefer a, a good zombie outbreak. At least you can see and, and smell them coming. That's something you don't, you don't get from the movies much, but trust me, most of them are pretty ripe. But I have a feeling that we'll get a fair share of the vengeful dead before the end of the movie tonight. Not quite zombies, not quite ghosts. Somewhere in between, I'd say. Okay, now let's... Take a moment to see what all you chiller maniacs are up to. All right, Crystal Ball. Do your thing here. Jack, J. 
Jason says Jack is back with a COVID-19 movie. Oh, no, not me, good sir. Let's see, Autumn says, hey, Jack. Hey, Autumn, thanks for joining us. Clayton says, nice crystal ball, Jack. Makes me want to go bowling. Well, <laughs> to each his own. All right, well, I'm just glad you're here with us tonight, Clayton or Tom. All right. David says, greetings, Jack, from Vicelli Pizza. Well, greetings to you, good sir, and all of your crew out there working hard tonight. And thank you for, for helping me bring this show here tonight, you and Grossfest. All right, Lisanne says, it's scary, I'm hiding. As well you should, as well you should. They don't call it Friday Night Frights for nothing. <laughs> Raymond says, back then STDs were deadly. Uh, yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. Jeff says, you're the coolest. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Now you know I was going to read that one. <laughs> Clayton, the dude outed me. Can't believe it. Mm. <laughs> believe it. Not a very nice guy at all. Okay. Anybody, anybody, what do you think of tonight's movie so far? Pretty good, hey? Nice, nice, uh, ghostly haunted atmosphere, I think. All right, all right, going once, going twice. All right. I'll tell you where we're going to be going here pretty soon, back to the movie. But first of all, again, I want to thank Vicelli Pizza, Butler PA, and Grossfest for sponsoring tonight's feature. Are you ready to get back to tonight's chiller? Then let's return to Barbara Steele in Terror Creatures from the Grave. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning. It's an automobile, isn't it? Of course. But does it move by itself? I'll show you in a second. Careful, sir. My grandfather always says that they're very dangerous. <laughs> How can I get into town from here? Well, I asked you, how can I get into town from here? Huh. You're wasting your time. No one can make court talk. What's wrong here? There's an owl caught in the engine. Oh, poor old bird. I wonder how it managed to get in there. Uh, you find a lot of owls in this part of the country. They're all over the place. The bird's done quite a bit of damage. Is there anyone around here who can repair it? No, no one around here knows anything about engines. Perhaps you might try the blacksmith. By the way, my name's Nemec. Kovac, it's a pleasure. I'm the new doctor here in Bradville. I stopped because I saw you reopen the villa. Are you going to be here long? No, I don't belong to the family. I'll just be here for one or two days. If I can be of any assistance. Yes, I wonder if you could give me a lift to the village. Oh, well, sure, that's no problem at all. All I can offer you is a horse and carriage, though. <laughs> Thank you, you're very kind. Don't worry about your car. We'll take care of it somehow. Oh, what are these? These? 
Oh, these are just ancient tombs. Plague spreaders were buried here during the 15th century. They put them here in unconsecrated ground to show their hatred for those who spread the plague and poisoned the water. That sounds incredible. Just an old legend. They thought that by doing this, their souls would be condemned to wander throughout eternity. As for me, I've never met any. <laughs> if I'm not being too indiscreet, tell me, what brought you here? Ah, Miss Corrine. Good morning. Good morning. Are you going to the village, Mr. Kovac? Come yes. Do you mind if I go along? Well, not at all. I have some errands to do. May I help you? Thank you. Get in. Is the line to Ratzani repaired? Yes, the line was repaired this morning. What number are you calling? Hello? 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 Oh! Will you excuse me? It'll only take a few minutes. Take a little walk in the meantime. Why don't you go down to the lake? Hello there, Stimo. Thank you. Be careful. Another couple of days, I think. As soon as everything is taken care of, I'll return to Krevitz. I hate staying at the villa now. You know, from Redzeni to Krevitz, the distance is very short. I hope we'll have a chance to see each other again. I'd look forward to it. I'm sure you thought I was very silly last night. No, why? The whole thing just got on your nerves, that's all. I must say that Cleo seemed terribly worried about you, however. <laughs> Don't believe it. We have nothing in common, really. We've lived apart most of the time. You see, I was in school in Rasenni, and, and I didn't even know they'd been married until I came home for my vacation. We often came to this lake when I was here on holiday. My father loved me very much and spent a lot of time with me. He was an exceptional man, much different from the way people picture him. Here, no one really understood him. Do you see this? What is it? A sundial he made that tells the best time for fishing. When the shadow reached the short pole, he would take his boat into the reeds. I must say, he certainly had a lot of imagination. Why do you say that? You're like everybody else. I know what you imply by that. I didn't mean to offend you, Corrine. But last night, it so happened that I listened to one of his recordings on the phonograph, and he was talking of plague spreaders, water, and death carts. I've heard it also. He had powers beyond the world of men. Do you think that the letter was forged? It's hard to tell. He was there last night. There was something he wanted to say. It's my father! I saw him. I saw him in the boat. I tell you, it was my father. I saw him. What I'm are you sure. saying? Can't you see the boat is empty? Look. Look. There's water dripping from the oars. Somebody was there. Oh, Albert. Oh, Albert, don't go don't away. Don't worry. I'm so afraid. I won't leave. Don't leave me alone, please. I promise. Hey, Albert. Corrine. Yes, we're coming right away. <laughs> Ah, the 
Dry already. Here they are. I have a very special prescription for off-season bathers. A local product. It works miracles. You'll see. That's where you keep it. Right, Stimmel? Hmm. It's good to have a patient who knows exactly what his doctor wants. <laughs> ah, here it is. I can smell good wine from a distance. Look here, 1897. <laughs> that was a vintage year, if ever there was one. Ah, you're an expert in the field of wine, my friend. <laughs> this, this will put fire in your veins. You first, Stimmel. No? Albert? Thanks for everything, Stimmel. For Corrine, pills from the kitchen and syrup from the cellar. Take this. It's good for you. And I recommend that you go back home right away. Damn clothes are bad for anyone's health. If it's all right with Corrine, I would much rather pursue the question of the letter. Oh, by the way. Uh, here it is. What do you make of it, Doctor? So, this is supposed to be the seal of Geronimus, hmm? May I look at it, Doctor? Just a moment. I think I still have one of his old letters. No doubt about it. It's his. Both seals have the same indentation here on the left side. He's right. At this point, we must take action. I'll report this to the proper authorities. Leave the villa at once you've got to. It's a place of death. Save yourself before it's too late. Before death strikes again. Tomorrow is the anniversary of your father's death. Do you understand? Of course, Stimmel. Of course. He worries about you because your father was his friend. I think we'd better go. I'll come and see you tomorrow, Stimmel. You must rest now. And thank you very much. And try not to worry about anything. Corrine, come on. I'll see you soon, Mr. Stinnell. I'll never see her again. I know it. The day of revenge is coming. Oh! Here we are. What kind of a public building is this? Dear Kovac, this is just a village. It doesn't pay to be in politics. The pharmacist is also mayor in his spare time. <laughs> Come on. Beryl? Beryl, where are you? I'm coming. You go on ahead. We won't be more than an hour. I'll be waiting for you. I, the undersigned, hereby...
declare that I found in the local pharmacy the body of Dr. Beryl Nielsen, pharmacist and elected mayor of this town. I hereby state that death is attributed to uh, heart failure. This will interest the police, I suppose. No. Why the police? The certificate I'm signing is more than sufficient. But shouldn't you report any violent or accidental death to the police? Death by heart failure is a sudden death, not a violent one. Would you please give me a couple of blank forms, number 113? Thank you. All this red tape. All these formalities. One moment. Who filled these out? I got them ready for you. I was free early this morning, so I wrote them out for you. This morning? How did you know the mayor was dead? The cart of the corpse collectors passed by last night. Everybody here in town heard it. The corpse collectors always come when somebody is doomed to meet his fate. They've passed by three times now. You picked the mayor, but it might have happened to anybody here. It was bound to be. Why? He was one of those present at the death of Geronimus Houff. They're all marked to die. Corrine, would you mind, dear? You went to the village. Here, Corrine, my back. A bit further down. What's wrong? You're trembling like a leaf. We found the mayor's body. The mayor's body? I saw it. It was horrible. Where did you find him? In the pharmacy. His face was eaten away with acid. Was he your friend? No. He used to come here to see your father. One of his many strange friends. Geronimus' best friends were all of such low extraction. You've always been so aristocratic in your taste. You hated his friends, didn't you? You seem to forget I was accustomed to a different kind of society. All the nobility of Crevice. Hmm. I was under the impression that my father had taken you away from the stage. I threw away a career. Who do you think your father was, after all? A famous doctor? A great scientist? He brought me way out here, to this place of horror. To this house of shadows and blood. This is not what I had hoped for. All my friends envied me. <laughs> they believed my husband had a great future. They were so wrong. A poor visionary, his head full of crazy ideas and finally wound up as a mad country doctor with illusions of grandeur. Yes, I hated him, as I hated all his stupid friends and all that they stand for. You've remained the same bad actress you always were. Operator. Will you get me Ratsani, Merpus 27? Here we are. Ah, 
This is the report on the death of Geronimus Howe. It was compiled by his five friends who were with him when the accident happened. Eh? Now you will see for yourselves. Now, Geronimus Howe. Deceased the 2nd of May? Yes, it's one year tomorrow. I remember him so well. Yes, we believe you, but continue. Just as you wish. Where was I? Due to an accident involving the fracture of the second cervical vertebra. It's, it's this one here, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's the one. Go on. Hmm. While in our presence, on the stairs of his residence, in witness to... And there follow the names of the five who were at the villa that night. Three of them are dead. The others haven't long to wait. Mark Richter. Deceased the 3rd of July, violent death. Elia Ivert. Deceased the 6th of October of heart failure. The late mayor came third. Certainly a strange coincidence. Coincidence? When after more than four centuries the corpse collector's cart was heard to pass by on these very nights, you still mean to say it's a coincidence? Now the fourth is next. Who's the fourth? Oscar Stinnell. Stinnell, your patient. Stinnell? Sure, he's the next one. But I don't know the name of the fifth witness. I tried for a whole year to decipher his handwriting. It isn't anybody I know. I could tell if he were from around here. It's illegible. Really? Like someone trying to conceal his identity. But it won't be enough to avoid the vengeance of Geronimus. I can't imagine why Dr. House should be seeking revenge on his friends. They said they were friends of his. Instead, they hated him because he dabbled in the occult. May I take this record along? Well, I'm really afraid it's an official uh, record, I can vouch for Tony Kovacs' integrity. Well, in that case... But please be sure that you bring it back here. Of course. Good day, sir. He's so convinced of what he says, it's pathetic. Come on. Hello, doctor. Feeling better, huh? Not too bad. You don't believe the mayor died from natural causes, hmm? If we're to believe the clerk, even Stinnell is in great danger. <sighs> that man is doomed anyway. It's a matter of a few short weeks. He seemed to be frightened at the name of Geronimus. And he was. Everybody here feared Geronimus. Put yourself in their position. A lunatic who endeavored to summon the souls of the ancient dead. His daughter speaks of him as a man of extraordinary gifts. Oh, he wasn't a fool, mind you. His publications caused a great deal of excitement at the university. But it didn't last, so he retired here to try to prove his theories. With the result that the local people joined forces to sign a petition to send him away. And I think that broke his heart. Do you take these things seriously? Mm. I'm a doctor. I deal only in facts. What about you, Mr. Kovac? I agree. The living I may fear, but certainly not the dead. Uh. Let's go. We'll find some means back to the village. Hot Tasty Pizza is just a phone call away at Pacelli Pizza. Select from our many choices of pizza toppings. And try our delicious subs, wings, salads, breadsticks, pasta meals, and even dessert. Pacelli Pizza offers quick, reliable, and friendly delivery. Or stop on in, say hello, and pick up your order at our Butler store located at 532 West Cunningham Street in Butler, PA. Check our website for complete menu, specials, store hours. Cicelli Pizza in Butler, PA, delivering classic Italian quality with every order. 
Gross Fest of Pittsburgh area's hottest independent horror convention. Come to Gross Fest 3, July 25th and 26th at the George Washington Hotel at 60 South Main Street in Washington, PA. Guests include Drew Marvick, Billy Pond, Bill Oberus Jr., Aaron R. Ryan, Brooklyn Ewing, Jerry LaRue, Jack Shadow, Aura the Witch, and El Von Nock from Chiller Night Theater. Check out GrossFest.com for our full list of guests, dates, location, and more. Don't miss Gross Fest 3! Tonight's movie stars Barbara Steele. Barbara had a dark, mysterious beauty that indeed stood out prominently for the horror genre. Fans recognize her for her talent and her unique features, which can either be the look of dark, mysterious beauty, or of alluring evil. If you're an old-time horror movie fan, you definitely know Barbara Steele. In addition to tonight's film, she's, she's been in movies such as Black Sunday, The Pit, and the Pendulum, The Ghost, Castle of Blood, An Angel for Satan, Nightmare Castle, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Hey, speaking of Nightmare Castle, the castle in tonight's movie is the same one. Just thought you'd like to know. All right, she's also appeared in television on the show Dark Shadows in the early 90s. And she was even on an episode of The Night Gallery. Remember that one? I was actually quite a fan of that show back in the day. Now, Barbara's known to horror fans as the queen of all screen queens. So what do you think? Do you have a favorite Barbara Steele movie? Let's see what all of you are saying as I gaze upon the crystal ball. All right. <laughs> all right, Lisa Ann says, his hair is still waxed together. All right, I jumped right into the middle of that one. Um, all right, no context for that. Sorry, Lisa Ann. Um, Raymond says, I'm motivated by him. Okay, maybe there's a few. <laughs> all right, Lisa Ann does say pizza. All right, I don't need context to, to figure that one out. Pizza's pizza, good. All right, Jason says, order the witch. Exactly, I thought of that too. Lisa Ann says, is Gross Fest still happening? Yes, I'm going to say yes until I'm told otherwise. I, I think we're safe with that one. Uh, Tom says, as of right now, it is. All right. Um, Raymond says, all of them. Okay, all of them as far as Barbara Steele movies. I knew you were a big fan of Barbara Steele. I, I thought of you in selecting this movie tonight. Hope you're enjoying it. John says, Black Friday and Nightmare Castle. Oh, all right, good selections. Jason says, Jack is out doing himself tonight. Excellent. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Oh, I, I try. Uh, Larry says, great show. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Larry. John says, I met Barbara Steele last year. Oh, where was that at, John? Do tell. He met Barbara Steele last year. All right. So while we're waiting for that, all right, Raymond gives us a thumbs up. While we're waiting for John, John meet Barbara Steele. That would be very cool. Did you get her autograph? You better have got her autograph. <laughs> all right. David says, Barbara was in Pretty Baby. Was that one of your favorite ones, David? Yeah, she was in... Uh, Actually, Diana mentioned about her being in Dark Shadows, and some of you mentioned that. That was back in 91, and then she was, I mentioned about her being on the, in an episode of the Night Gallery. Remember that one? Rod Serling hosted the Night Gallery. That was way back in 71 when she was on that one. I love that show. All right, John says at Horror Hound Indianapolis. Oh, very cool. Yes, she's still around. All right. That's neat, neat information. 
All right. Hey, don't forget, we'll be having a Jack Shadow giveaway contest at the end of the show, so stick around. Okay. Who's ready to get back to the movie? Then away we go. Five witnesses, and only two are still alive. Old Stennell and an unknown person who signed the accident report in the legible script. Who could it be? Three men have already died. At this point, it's hard to believe in coincidence. There has to be some time. Was this something Geronimus had planned? One can't deny that his presence is felt everywhere. be a burglar. Perhaps it was only the fish. That's curious. The bowl was full. What a beautiful collection of antique clocks you have. <laughs> there isn't one that isn't authentic. They're of great value. They belong to my husband. 
He was the only one who really understood their complicated mechanisms. They haven't worked for a year. They all stopped together at the exact hour of his death. A beautiful etching. Do you know who made it? Oh, that one. It was done in the 15th century and was put in the clock by Geronimus. The little girl's name is Purif. The story goes that she brought pure water to the plague victims in the hospital. The plague spreaders caught her and killed her. You're here. It's all over.
over. He was full of life before paralysis tied him down to a wheelchair. I guess he couldn't stand the pain anymore. I'll come by the station later to sign the report. Right, doctor. Do you still think this is a coincidence, doctor? I don't know anymore. Uh, and do you realize that we had been warned by the clerk and took no notice of his words? What do you think we could have done? to prevent Stinnell from taking his own life. Go ahead, take him away. His face had the same look of horror as we found on the mayor's. Do you really think the ghost of Geronimus goes around harvesting victims? What if Geronimus were alive? Yes, alive. There's a letter in his own hand. These apparitions of his, suppose they were real, no one ever saw the body of Geronimus dead, not even his wife. Remember, we have no evidence. We only know he died through a statement of his five friends who say that they saw him fall down the stairs. Does that seem enough to you? What you think, then, is that the statement they made is false. Is that right? But why would Geronimus have planned a thing like that? Why? I don't know yet. But you realize there has to be a motive. Maybe he wanted to disappear from the hostile world. Yes, if that were the case, he would be dead for everybody. Yes, dead to all but five. These men spelled danger to Geronimus, which is why he felt he was compelled to get them out of the way. Four of them are dead. The fifth is completely unknown. Look at this, Doctor. Look here. It's Dinnell's. He could have written it last night. It's half burned. He must have tried to get rid of it. He has returned. Save yourself. He summoned you too. He summoned you too. Hmm. He must have meant to leave a warning for the fifth witness and he didn't quite make it. Then something should be done. Today is the anniversary of the death of Geronimus. The day they're going to transfer his corpse. At last we'll be able to see if his body was ever buried. is empty. Then he isn't dead after all. The fifth witness really is in danger of death. How can he be warned? Who could it be? I could, I could tell, tell if he were from around here. Save yourself. He summoned you too. Is there a telephone nearby? Yes, come with me.
Yes, I want Krevitz. Try to hurry the call. Do you understand now? It's Joseph Morgan. He's the fifth witness. The letter Geronimus wrote was addressed to him. Operator? Yes, that's right. This is Kovac here. Is Attorney Morgan there? Operator? Speak up. Louder. What trip? He left for the Villa Hauf. No, I'll take care of it. We better go back immediately. We must hurry. Come on. I've been waiting for you. I knew you would come. Geronimus. Geronimus. It can't be. It's impossible. He's already arrived. Look here, Doctor. Morgan! It was a... Take this. I saw the body of Geronimus Howe. It was there. I saw it. I tell you, it was he. There's no doubt about it. He seemed to be looking at me with those spent eyes of his. If Geronimus is dead, there must be a reason for these machinations. There are many things you could and should explain to us, Morgan. What made you come here? Let him rest now, some other time. Please excuse me. We'll talk later. This is the letter that was sent to you. I'll see you shortly. You'll be all right, Morgan. Take it easy. I don't know anything. Honestly, I was locked in the kitchen. Oh, I beg you, Louise, tell me, what did you see? Nothing at all. Then what are you so scared about? What is it? You must tell me what happened. It's impossible to explain it. The house seemed full of a coldness. More than it's ever become in winter. Suddenly, all the doors began to creak. The minute I heard that I was so frightened, I ran and locked myself in. It was then that I heard his voice. Whose voice, Louise? The voice of Dr. Geronimus Hauf. I'm leaving here. I won't stay in this house any longer. My father! Where did the voice come from? What did it say? Maybe Kurt knows he was going around the villa. Where is Kurt? I really don't know. I already told you. I was locked up in the kitchen. Please excuse me. Good night. (laughs) 
How is Mr. Morgan? Better. It was only a momentary shock. Oh. I caused you a lot of trouble, Albert. Can you ever forgive me? It was I who asked you to remain. It's all my fault. I still wonder at how lucky I was. It's given me a chance to stay close to you that much longer. Albert, I need you so. Sometimes I can't believe it's true. What really happened to my father? <clears throat> How about something to drink for a thirsty doctor? Hmm? With pleasure, doctor. What would you like? A cognac, if you have it. Only a drop, of course. <laughs> How's Morgan? He'll be all right soon. Hmm. What do you think of his story? Morgan's very much of a realist. He's not the type that sees ghosts. In that case, you have reason to think the body is still around? Above everything else, court has to be questioned. It's very important that he be found. Yes, but... Oh. Don't get up. Thank you. Mm, perfect. choices of pizza toppings. Try our delicious subs, wings, salads, breadsticks, pasta meals, and even dessert. The Chelly Pizza offers quick, reliable, and friendly delivery. Or stop on in, say hello, and pick up your order at our Butler store located at 532 West Cunningham Street in Butler, PA. Check our website for complete menu, specials, and store hours. The Chelly Pizza in Butler, PA, delivering classic Italian quality with every order. Gross Fest, a Pittsburgh area's hottest independent horror convention. Come to Gross Fest 3, July 25th and 26th at the George Washington Hotel at 60 South Main Street in Washington, PA. Guests include Drew Marvick, Billy Pond, Bill Oberus Jr., Aaron R. Ryan, Brooklyn Ewing, Jerry LaRue, Jack Shadow, Aura the Witch, and L. Von Nock from Cheller Night Theater. Check out GrossFest.com for our full list of guests, dates, location, and more. Don't miss Gross Fest 3. Remember the water. The water will save you. Death is approaching. This warning's for you. What do the words mean? We'll find out. You know, there's something almost magical when it comes to the element of water and its protective qualities against evil. A ghost, it said, cannot pass over running water. A vampire is repelled by holy water. And tonight, it seems the only way to escape the wrath of the dead and their inevitable approaches through pure water. 
You know, the Greeks once believed in a river that formed the boundary between Earth and the underworld. They called the river Styx, and the dead could not pass over it. They had to be ferried across by a boatman, and that's why those who died had a coin placed in their mouth, or coins placed over their eyes to pay a toll for the boatman and they to bed across the river. Now, Styx was believed to possess magical powers, and anyone who touched the water became invincible. Now, the Greek hero Achilles was said to have been dipped in the water in his childhood, which made him into a, an indestructible man. Indestructible man. Hey, we played that movie a few weeks ago. Now, the only part of him that was covered was his, his heel, which his mother held as she dunked him in. And that's where the term Achilles heel comes from, by the way, a metaphor for a vulnerable spot. So there's a lot to all of this, the, the connection of water and its protective qualities and, and being a veil between the living and of the dead. Pretty interesting. Okay, let's check on all of you. Let's make sure you're all behaving. All right. Let's see. David said, did you know that Barbara Steele's married name is Poe? She was married to a Hollywood screenwriter, James Poe. I did not know that. That's pretty neat information. Hmm. Let's see. Clayton is having la lasagna here tonight. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, let's see. Jason says pizza and an eyeball martini and Jack's classic picks. All right. All those sound <laughs> pretty good. Let's see, to set the stage. Uh, Jason Sticks, excellent band. <laughs> I can't, uh, can't disagree. Lisanne, what's Steel Con? You don't know what Steel Con? Okay. Well, you're probably not a, a comic geek like a lot of us are. <laughs> Or a horror movie. Well, a horror movies, but uh, there's a lot of, actually, a lot of different things. And, you know, the genres like comics and movies and all that. Um, all right, maybe someone will put a link up there. Cecilia says, replying to Clayton, it was supposed to be this month in Pittsburgh. Robert England was supposed to be there. Ah, yeah, would have been neat to, to meet Freddy. All right, Clayton says, pick up sticks. Excellent game. Jason says, Jack knows his mythology. Oh, I, more, more partial to, to Norse, but I, you know, I dabble a bit here and there. Raymond says, Jack, you do know your Greek mythology. <laughs> yes, well, their underworld, you know, is a little different than my underworld, but there is a, a big body of water outside my castle that separates the living from the dark domain. Pretty neat. I don't know if all of you knew that or not. Okay. All the mythologies are pretty similar. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Listen up, folks. This is it. This is it. Let's return to the chilling conclusion to terror creatures from the grave. We can't pick up at the same point after a whole year of silence. No matter what. Yet once I was ready to leave Geronimus for you. You mustn't say that. I'm in love with you. Yes. But this didn't stop you from disappearing. We had both agreed to this. Maybe. But not for a whole year without seeing each other. You could have died and I wouldn't even have known it. I missed you, Cleo, more than I can say. How don't beautiful you are. Me. Oh, don't. Let me be, please. Go away. Oh, no. Thank you. 
Good isn't here either. What's that? It's my doll with a music box inside. I, I've heard this melody before. It's an ancient lullaby I learned from my father. Remember pure water, pure water will save you. The water will save you. This warning is Pure water for will you. save you. Remember. What can that remember, mean? Remember, this warning's for you. I will therefore expect you, not later than tomorrow, to assist me in drawing up my will. Faithfully, Geronimus Howe. You should have known at once it was a trap. We're both in danger. We can't remain here. We must go. Please, we'll make a new life somewhere else. And the letter? What about the one who wrote it? He knows far too many things. Then you don't believe it was Geronimus, do you? Certainly not. I know who engineered all of this. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just defend myself. There was also another witness that night. Someone whose presence we forgot. Court, the gardener. Court. That's strange. The brazier is lit. This is where my father often came to work on his experiments. It's the place where the plague spreaders were executed centuries ago. Let's get out of here, Albert. Master, the night of your revenge has begun. I embalmed your body, all is done, Master.
obeyed your commands to the last. It's almost the hour of your death one year ago today, and the forces of evil you dominated will break loose. The plague spreaders among us again. They'll show mercy for no one. Punishment will strike the innocent and the guilty alike. Please forgive me, Master, but I must break my long silence now. Your daughter, Corinne, at least, has to be warned. Before it's too late. Did you find him? No. He seems to have disappeared. And we've been looking everywhere in the villa, Doctor. <coughs> It's over for you. Be careful, Albert. Don't go near him. It looks like the plague. A strangely virulent form of the plague. They've come. They're all around us. It's incredible. It's unmistakably the plague. It's beginning, the night of his vengeance. There will be no escape. I saw it all one year ago, right here, for you standing now. That they were all here, his friends who'd betrayed him. Right over there! Before the mirror! Yes, 
The moment he'd been expecting. Dr. Hop's voice thundered out of him! This is a petition to get me out of this villa. Away from my research. It's signed by all of you. You all fear me, and you have reason to. You've tried to ruin me, but I know things that will destroy each of you. You, Stinner, always so shy and reserved, but an ugly usurer without mercy, blackmailer of your debtors. You, Richter, an embezzler with a long police record, you came to this village to escape justice. You, Ivert, a thief and a cheat, posing under the guise of respectability. And you, Mayor Nielsen, I know of your filthy traffic in drugs. And as for you two, the moment of reckoning has come. I've long known of your clandestine affair. It's such a pity to break up your romance, isn't it? But I'll expose all of you. You're finished. I'll make you pay for this betrayal. And you, Cleo, can say goodbye to your comfortable life. I'll throw you out of this house, you tramp! Kill him, Joseph! No. No. Cursed murderers! You won't escape my anger. My vengeance will find you wherever you are. My curse on all of you. <laughs> didn't believe me, but now you will become aware of my power. Spirits of evil whose powers come from beyond the grave, restless souls of the plague spreaders who wander through these halls, avenge me. I've summoned you. Avenge me.
I'm not going to die. You don't frighten me, Geronimo. Come and get me if you can. I'm ready for you. I won't get me. No. 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 It's Morgan. Doctor, look after Corrine. All right. This way. Five centuries ago, have emerged from their graves. The fountain. It's drying up. Don't you understand, Doctor? It's only the water that keeps them away. Our only hope is rain. This way. I'll try and stop them. Take care of Corrine. No. What are you trying to do, Albert? No! Wait. No, no Albert, way. no! Albert, I don't want to leave you!
friend. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed the movie tonight. Okay, we're almost at the end, so it's time for a Jack Shadow giveaway contest. Are you ready? Okay, for those who, who watch, you know the drill. I'll play a, a chiller movie clip. And whoever guesses the title of the movie and the year it was released will win a, a chiller night. The Spirit of Halloween book. Got a pretty, pretty handsome looking ghoul there on the front. And you also get an, an autographed picture of yours ghoulie. All right. So, not too shabby. Okay, remember. The movie title and the year it was released, the first one who answers correctly gets the prize. All right, are you ready? Now don't just say you're ready, are you really ready? Okay, get set and go. some good responses, some very entertaining responses, but RK on YouTube got the, uh, got the correct answer the first. He wrote, uh, Robot Monster 1953. So RK, you'll, uh, you'll get the Spirit of Halloween book and the autographed picture of me. All right, well, thank you for playing. Now, if you could just, uh, you can email me at chillernighttheater at outlook.com. Chillernighttheater at outlook.com. Or you can just go to the website, chillernighttheater.com, and message me there and give me your mailing information. Okay, I want to thank everybody for, for participating. All right. I hope you enjoyed everything. I thought that was a pretty good one. Okay. Join me again next time for another classic, or not-so-classic, chiller movie. But for now, it's late, and you should all go to bed. Because if you're not asleep, you can't have nightmares! <laughs> and where's the fun in that? So sleep tight, think fright, and let's hope the monsters bite. I bid you adieu, my children of the night. How many times do I have to tell you just because something isn't good doesn't mean it's bad? Oh,